welcome back with another Sims 4 communal living build. Since y'all were loving the last one I did on the retirement community and wanted to see more shared living builds, I'm doing another. This time I am making something I haven't seen anyone else build in The Sims, and that's a homeless community. My inspiration for this came from the tiny home villages some towns have been making as transitional housing for housing insecure individuals. Plus, with The Sims 4 for rent coming out soon, this is the perfect time to bring this concept into the game. So we are on the 50 by 40 vacuous green lot in Delso Valley, which seemed like a great spot to build our homeless community because to me, this lot just screams bulldoze condemned homes that have been acquired and rezoned by the city. So for the layout of this lot, I included a bunch of tiny homes that have been built out of old shipping containers because those just seem like cheap, quick building materials for this type of a neighborhood. I also wanted this area to be a more all-inclusive community where there's plenty of accessible support services for residents to utilize. So besides the shipping container houses, there's also two shared use buildings. At the front is a sort of skill center, which will be where the residents can come to learn different things and help them get back on their feet. Then at the back will be a recreation center so residents can gather together and hang out. Initially, I went with a green and white color scheme for the outside, which looked nice, but it was just too new and polished. We all know that nobody is building super nice modern facilities for homeless people. It's unfortunate, but it's true. They're gonna go with the cheap repurposed stuff. So eventually I do go back and change up the color scheme of the exterior to look a little bit more run down. I changed the green on the houses to the orange metal siding and the white on the shared buildings to that rusty metal variant. You'll get glimpses of all those changes later on in the build, but we'll take a closer look at it all in the tour at the end. This community is supposed to be cheap to run, so I also made sure to put in plenty of solar panels, wind turbines, and a couple water collectors. My last build on the Rose Gold Years retirement community did surprisingly well for my videos, and I was so amazed at how many of you subscribed to my channel after that. It was really cool to chat with so many of you all in the comments, and I want to just thank y'all so much for that. If you are new here, hey, welcome in. I'm Liz, she, her. I play a lot of The Sims, Animal Crossing, and try to put a bit of a unique spin on all of my builds. I aim to post videos about every other week, but uh, consistency is not my forte. I try, but I've got a full-time job, am a slow ass builder, and am just not an organized hustle culture person, which YouTube doesn't like. So yeah, if you haven't seen my videos pop up in your feed for a while, just swing by the channel and check in. There's probably something fun to watch. But yeah, I'd love to hear more from you all. What sorts of videos are you interested in seeing more of? So far, I've been doing mostly Sims 4 and Animal Crossing, but I wanna branch out into other cozy games like Stardew Valley and Coral Island. I'm also working on getting my computer upgraded, so hopefully I'll be able to get into streaming a bit more. So yeah, let me know what y'all wanna see us get into, whether that's specific build ideas, let's plays, or whatever else. Here I'm working on the skills center. The right side of the building is a sort of tech room. There's a couple computers in here where residents can take online classes, job search, or just surf the web. I also put in a fabrication machine in here as another skill building item for residents to learn a trade with. Also, if they build stuff here, they could probably sell that for some extra cash. In the side yard directly next to this room, I also built an open air workshop area. Over there is a couple woodworking tables and candle making stations. Again, more trade skills and money making options for residents to get into. Inside here, I was trying to go for a sort of repurposed, upcycled look with these industrial cabinets, but in the end, it just wound up looking too nice. Instead of seeming thrifty and handmade, it looked too close to that bougie restoration hardware stuff that's way more expensive than it ever should be. So eventually I changed those out for the cheap particle board looking base game cabinets. I also switched up the color scheme later on when I changed the exterior colors. It takes me a while to figure that all out. So you'll see this green industrial aesthetic for a while, but don't worry. When we get to the rec building, I finally get the aesthetic figured out and we'll of course see the final results in the tour later on. On the opposite side of this front building is the therapy room. That sounds a little bit weird, but I'm not sure what else to call it. So I'd imagine a therapist or social worker sets up a few times per week here and holds different support groups, depending on what the residents need or want, whether that's on trauma, grief, addiction, chronic illness, etc. 
free weekly therapy that's like two steps from your house, these residents are living the good life. Again, the color scheme and counters aren't the final look I go with in here and will change in the end, but the overall layout will be the same. So the front half of the room is a sort of break area. There's coffee and snacks set out on the counter because you can't have a group therapy session without hot drinks and pastries. You're in an emotionally charged space interacting with a bunch of people. The least they can do is fill you up on caffeine and sugar. I also put a little magazine stand out here that I'm pretending has a bunch of pamphlets on it instead. I used to work at a trauma and mental health focused nonprofit, so I have firsthand experience with the overwhelming amount of pamphlets that would absolutely be on display here. That one single stand probably wouldn't cover it, but it'll do. The back half of the room is the meeting area. We've got our circle of uncomfortable folding chairs and walls full of even more pamphlets, handouts, community events, and inspirational posters. I also put a wall in the middle to section off these two spaces. That way, if someone needs to step out to take a break during the group or talk to someone privately, they can go out to the coffee area instead of having to step outside. We gotta maintain that confidentiality. I say about a room that has huge glass doors and windows everywhere. Just imagine the glass in here has that privacy film stuff on it. Moving to the back of the lot, we have the rec building. All this self-improvement and skill building stuff on this lot is great, but I wanted to be sure to include a space for residents to just chill out and hang together. So in here, there's a big shared kitchen. All the tiny homes have kitchenettes, which are sufficient day to day, but it's still nice to have a full kitchen to cook more involved meals in. In this building, there's also a big dining table so people can gather for shared meals. Opposite the kitchen, there's a living room set up and on the porch at the front is a ping pong table. Now this entire build took me over 12 hours to complete. And I went back and forth on so many of the decor choices that I had to cut out a bunch of it. You'll see things jump quite a bit in this area, especially because it took me way too long to sort out the colors and cabinet choices. I see so many Sims creators complete builds in just a few hours or even like 30 minutes in videos and streams and I just could never. I thought that as I built more, I'd eventually get faster, but it is just not happening. I swear I never remember where items are in the catalog and I'll spend so long trying different colors, looking at things from different angles, placing things just so. It's to the point where it's a bit embarrassing. Not even because it takes so long, no, no, no. It's because you'd think that after spending a disgustingly long time on a build, it'd be pretty much perfect, but no. There's always stuff I don't play test and mistakes I forget to fix before uploading to the gallery. This is probably just a niche personal failing, but do any of you also struggle with taking a disgraceful amount of time on builds? For those of you amazing people who can complete builds in a reasonable time frame, how do you do it? Please share your secrets with me because I need all the help I can get. Here I've jumped ahead after I went through and recolored everything. So from now on, the colors you see should be the final ones pretty much. Moving over to the container homes, they all have about the same layout. There's a one by three bathroom at the back, a single bed on the right wall, and a kitchenette with the same cheap cabinets on the left wall. I then went in and personalized the color and decor for each person living there. This first one is where Rylan and Adrian are staying. Rylan is active, a child of the ocean, ambitious, and has a big happy family aspiration. He wound up here after his business and marriage fell apart. He used to run a small boating company where he would take people out on whale watching tours and kayaking trips, but the business went under around the same time he was going through a divorce, so he ended up losing his place. He has aspirations of running his own business and starting a family, but things just aren't working out for him. His dream business failed and he went through a divorce after finding out he was unable to have biological children. He's definitely going through some hard times right now, but I think he's optimistic about finding a new job and has been enjoying the challenge of being a somewhat guardian figure for Adrian, who he's sharing this space with. Adrian is a rebellious teen who ran away from a bad home environment. He's a hot-headed klepto with the villainous Valentine aspiration. The graffiti you'll see around this place is definitely from him, and as you can probably tell, he's got some self-sabotaging tendencies. So yeah, he's a bit challenging, but he's a good, sensitive kid deep down. It's just gonna take some time, healing, and finding more positive outlets for his energy. 
Thankfully, he's been doing well rooming with Ryland, who's a pretty chill but upstanding figure Irene really seems to connect with. I went with a lot of warm woods, blacks, and blues for their house. I also put up plenty of national park posters for Ryland and brand posters for Adrian. Over the TV, I also put some graffiti. I imagine that Ryland asked Adrian to paint it as a way to support his art in a legal, non-destructive way. I think Ryland likes Adrian's graffiti and is fine with him doing it, but will make him clean it up if he spray paints something he's not supposed to. So I made sure to include a cleaning bucket at the front of their house too. This yellow house is where Kylie is staying. She's an elderly sim who wound up here after she wasn't able to afford rent after her partner passed. She's childish, creative, and a freakin'. I see her and her late partner as being that sort of oddball, free spirit couple who used to live in a van or some community where they traded for things instead of having typical jobs. She loves dumpster diving and collecting things, which turned into some hoarding tendencies after losing her partner. She's been getting help from the therapist here though and has been doing much better. I wanted her home to really reflect her anti-capitalism, thrifty lifestyle, so I went with earthy colors and old mismatched furniture and decor in here. It's a bit dated and quirky, but it suits Kylie perfectly. This is actually probably my favorite house of the whole bunch. It's not super stylish, but it just looks so warm and welcoming, and I would love to hang out here listening to all of Kylie's wild life stories and anti-consumerism rants while we sip on some herbal tea she grew herself. Blue House is Addie's place. She left an unhealthy relationship and tried to go into a shelter, but couldn't find one that would allow her to bring her dog. So instead of leaving her furry friend behind, she ended up homeless. Addie is a gloomy, clumsy dog lover who wishes her life was like a romance novel, but she seems to just be a magnet for bad dating experiences. She's working on healing from a bad relationship and struggles with depression, so things are tough for Addie right now, but thankfully she has her best friend pal with her to help her through it all. I see these two as loving curling up on the couch together to watch sappy movies, reading romance books, or coloring. Eddie would probably rarely leave her home, but having a dog helps her find the motivation to get outside and interact with the world a bit, which is good for her. I went with a casual, calming vibe for their little house. Lots of blues, creams, and browns. Addie is a romantic, sad girl, so of course I had to put in tissues, twinkle lights, and a fluffy rug for her too. The next house over is where Kate is staying. She's a struggling comedian who had been living out of her car before she came here. Kay is erratic, a goofball, and adventurous. She's one of those people who has to be on the go, doing something new and exciting all the time. This, paired with her emotional instability and use of comedy as a defense mechanism, tends to get her into some hot water with people frequently. So even though she may seem fun and confident and put together on the surface, she's definitely got some shit to work on. I went for a chill, cool, contemporary vibe for her home. I don't think she cares all that much about having a tidy, presentable home, and she's probably a bit ADHD, so I put a few messy items around the place. She has a job, even though it's not a very successful nor well-paying one, though I gave her a bunk bed with a desk underneath for working on her jokes and any comedy writer gigs she may get. 
I also gave her a microphone for practicing her routines. The next tiny home is Rod Ricks. Rod is a homeless vet who's been struggling to find work with his physical and mental health conditions. His traits are paranoid, loyal, and broke. He can be a bit long-winded and has some strong opinions on things, but he's a good guy who wants to be the neighborhood confidant. I don't see Rod being much into decorating, so I kept his home pretty basic. A couple comfy seats he picked up for cheap, and some old sentimental art he's collected over the years, and that's about all he needs. has some headcanon that he and Kylie have a bit of a thing for each other. They are so different yet so similar to me. Kylie is a very anti-establishment, free spirit, old grunge chick. Rod is much more straight-laced and worked for the establishment, but there's nothing like working for the government to turn you into one of its biggest critics. He definitely has respect for the time he did in the military, but still sees the issues with it for sure. I just see them working because they're both people who have tons of stories they love telling, they both enjoy sharing advice, are anti-consumerism, build things with their own hands type of people. I can just picture them sitting on a porch, sipping on some iced tea, chatting the day away together. I don't think they have a full thing going on, but there's a spark there for sure. Our final home here is where Jasmine is staying. She's an aspiring musician who can't catch a break. Jasmine is romantic, outgoing, and a music lover. You know those singer-songwriters who play at hipster coffee shops and farmer's market? That's kind of her vibe. She does a lot of soft, sentimental stuff. Not my cup of tea, but she's good at it. She's been doing the musician thing for quite some time now, and even though she's talented, she hasn't been able to get very far with it. Now that she's getting into her 40s, she's starting to lose some hope that she'll ever make it big, and is maybe looking to transition into something that would be a bit more forgiving of her time and self-esteem. If she does turn her back on the music industry, maybe she'll have the time to invest in building the deeper, longer-lasting relationship she wants. Jasmine is an extrovert and one of those people who can make friends with everyone. Like, she's so sweet and nice, it's almost annoying, but you can't help but like her. So she has an easy time making friends, but with her music career getting in the way, she's been a bit flaky and not as present as she'd like. So maybe a career change would be good to help her keep the friends she wants and not feel so lonely. Plus, she'll maybe be able to afford to pay rent and eat and stuff, which is also important. For the style of her house, I went for a soft boho feel. Plenty of patterns, pastels, and plants. I also gave her a keyboard for working on her music. That's it for interior decorating, let's move on to outside. In the front left corner of the lot is the community garden. This is not only a place for residents to grow food, it's also another spot for them to learn new skills, plus gardening can be quite therapeutic. I know when I'm having a bad day, going outside and digging in some dirt definitely helps me. I love plants, but I am not a great plant caretaker. Most things I plant just end up enduring a slow death, but I really do try. I'm just bad at it. Maybe after failing so much, I'll start to get the hang of it. It doesn't seem to be working yet, but it has to eventually, right? In the center courtyard area, I wanted there to be a gathering spot for all the residents. So I put in a bonfire area for everyone to spend the evenings hanging out together around the fire. There's also an art therapy space in the back left corner that you'll catch a few glimpses of here and there. I wanted this exterior to look a bit disheveled, a bit rough around the edges, but they're still trying and it's nice for what they're working with. Most of this lot is surrounded by an old chain link fence, there's some discarded tires and stuff scattered around, and plenty of overgrown grasses and weeds growing along the edges of everything. I know it doesn't sound super appealing, but I think it ends up looking quite nice, especially with the yellow flowers sprinkled around everywhere. That's pretty much it though. I had to cut out a bunch because I went back and forth on color schemes and everything, 
So let's go ahead and take a quick tour so you can see how this all finally came together in the end. Here's our finalized homeless community. This place has most everything your sims may need while they're trying to secure more permanent housing. Everyone gets a tiny home to stay in, there's a rec building, skill center, garden, therapy, it's got it all. Over here we have the tech room. Swapping out the counters and wall colors really help this place look a little more affordable and a little rougher around the edges while still being a nice space. Moving to the other side of the building is the therapy room. This half is the refreshment area so you can fuel up on caffeine and sugar before a long group session. Through the doors here is the actual support group meeting area, plenty of informational brochures and inspirational posters, which is on brand. On this side of the skill center is a workshop area for improving your handiness and candle making skills. The shelves at the back are for storing extra belongings that don't fit in people's houses, but they want to keep still. I stuck this old airstream over here because I had extra room to fill up, but you could also pretend it is a temporary office for maybe a social worker or career recruiter who works out of it from time to time. First is Rylan and Adrian's place. It's cool, it's masked, it's just the right mix of both of them. The middle house is Kylie's. It's a little funky, a little dated, but so inviting. Last house on this side is Addie's place. Such a calm, casual vibe in here. Her and Pal are gonna be right at home. In this back corner, there's a little fake clothesline. And then over in the other corner, there's a little art area. And here is the finished rec building. This space will probably be pretty popular for everyone to hang out in throughout the day. Having shared spaces like this and the fire pit outside just feel like they'd really help build a close knit little community in this neighborhood, which is probably one of the main draws for staying in a shared living space like this. You don't have a lot of privacy, but you do have a good community around you. Here's Kay's finished little house. It's cool, it's fun, it's a little messy, just like her. In the middle here is Rod's spot. It's a bit plain, but I feel there's a lot of sentimentality in some of these items and that suits him just fine. Last up is Jasmine's house. Very boho and pastel, which is perfect for her. That's everything. It took me too long to finish all this, but I'm happy with the results and I don't think I've ever seen any other homeless community builds in The Sims, which is a crime. So I hope this helps fill that void for y'all looking for more unique builds for your non-traditional households. If y'all have any other suggestions for interesting build ideas you want to see me create for you, share them with me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It really helps out. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'd love to have you here. Remember, be kind to yourself today and I'll see you next time. Thank you.